Everybody, Dre Ball on DreAllDay.com. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. Y'all seen me over 5,000 videos here on YouTube. Might be 6,000 by the time you see this. But I decided, I just decided like two days ago, that I was going to start a new segment here on this channel that I think y'all are going to be interested in. But I'm going to go off the feedback that y'all give me from this one if you want to see more of this. But I want to introduce the lady in my life, my woman, my girlfriend. Her name is Anna. Anna, welcome Hi, to everybody. the show. All right, she's, she's here for the first time. She is a video rookie. Are you a rookie on video? I am not a rookie in anything, just so we're clear. Okay, I didn't know she was going to say <laughs> tell, tell us your experience on video, first of all, because I don't, I don't know. I'm learning right now, too. I don't have a lot of experience on the video. That was a joke, but uh, I don't like to be called a rookie. Anyway, what we're going to do on this show right here, y'all, is we're going to talk about different topics, not just from my perspective, because you heard my perspective many times thousands of times here on YouTube. We're going to get the woman's perspective, but me being the excellent interviewer that I, that I am, the great question asker that I am, because I wrote a book called Ask Yourself a Better Question, which you can buy at dreallday.com slash ask. And that's, at the same time, you can buy my brand new book, The Mental Workbook, which is coming out the 4th of July. By the time you see this video, this is probably already out, so go to dreallday.com slash workbook and get yourself a mental workbook. This is the best book I've ever written. I'm working on this book number 14, book number 15. Oh, the bag is secured. Shout out to DJ Khaled. But anyway, we're going to introduce Anna. We're going to get to know Anna. I'm going to interview her and ask her some questions. I'm going to ask her the questions that I know y'all want to ask. Not every question y'all want to ask, but most of the <laughs> questions y'all want to ask. And we're going to talk about how can you find a woman when it comes to just playing the field if you're single, online dating, what attracts men to women, what attracts a woman to a man. We're going to get all that from a woman's perspective today. If y'all interested in that, hit the thumbs up button on this video right now and make sure you leave a comment letting me know what else you want to hear us talk about. So this video better get at least 150 thumbs up. If it doesn't, we're not doing this again. So I'm saying that right now. So let's get right into it, Anna. I came to the United States in the year 2000. I am not from here. I bet you can tell from my... Um, a lot of people can't tell. From Georgia. Georgia is a small little country in the midst of Europe. It's literally between east and west, so it's really undecided east or west. And I decided to just leave everything and come to New York and see what's it all about and what I can do here. So you are from the country of Georgia and you came to the USA in the year 2000. What was happening before then and why did you come to the U.S. at? Like, go a little bit deeper than what you just said. All right, cool. So I started as a teenager. I was in entertainment business in Georgia. I was picked to participate in several beauty pageants when I was like 16, 15 years old. I won three titles in Georgia. Two of them were Miss Georgia, Miss 96, 95 and 96. Um, and after that, I lived this life of national fame, you know, the red carpets, the runways, the everything that comes with it, you know, um, but we did the best we could, you know, we did the runways, we did the, you know, the photo shoots, the commercials and everything else. So I lived that life and after about a year or so, I realized that it was really not me. It was, I was really not having fun doing it. So that's how that came about. Okay. So you originally came into New York. What was it like when you first came to New York? New York itself, your experience, what was going through your mind? Did you speak English? No, I didn't speak any English, so that's the thing. Um, New York was, I had, I didn't even know where New York was on the map. I literally had no idea. So I end up um, getting to know a girl who used to work for my father. She lived upstate New York and she said, why don't you come and stay with me? So I stayed with her for two weeks. And after that, she introduced me to a large community in Brooklyn, New York, where there are Georgians, there are Russians, and I started getting acquainted and kind of living that immigrant rough life, you know, where a lot of people live in the same houses, they share rooms. I wanted to order juice and I couldn't order juice and I looked it up in a little pocket dictionary and you know how you can't say the word or you can't, yeah, say the words, yeah, you can't pronounce them the way you read them in English. So I said, J.U., how do you say this? So I said, hey, can I have Coca-Cola? I just said Coca-Cola, basically. So that's how bad it was. Did you know who the president was? No. You didn't know? I don't think so. 
when did we meet? Let's fast forward even more. Tell everyone how we met. Where did you first encounter my presence? Not even physically, but just my presence anyway. When did you first hear about me? We met online. 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 Where online? Was it Instagram, Tinder? Where Twitter, can you meet Dre? He's always online. Where else are you going to meet him? YouTube. Where'd you meet? Where? Where online? We met on a dating site. A dating, like a dating app. We were on this app called Plenty of Fish. Oh boy. Plenty of Fish. It was a dating app. I think it's still out. I don't even know. I, I think we did it. I don't have it anymore. But <laughs> Plenty of Fish was like more conversational. People had to write out these whole profiles. So you got to kind of get to know people a little bit more. And we met in 2014. So I want you to tell them what you saw when you just saw my profile. Because you didn't know who I was, right? You didn't recognize me from anywhere or nothing? No, I did not. And you didn't know me from watching my basketball no, drills on YouTube? No, 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 no. So when you first saw me on that dating app, that was the first time you had ever seen my face before? Yes. Okay, so when you saw my profile on that app, what was it that got your attention, if anything? What got my attention is not the, the picture. Not the picture. It was not about how he looked. I had a couple of pictures of my shirt off. It wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. It was. It was what he said about himself and how he wrote about it about himself. It was simple, concise, to the point, and it looked like it was genuine. There was no extra fluff in there. There was no extra anything in there. When you saw my profile, then and. You felt like, okay, it's genuine. I got a feeling this guy's interesting. What did you think to do next? What did you think the next move would be? My uh, game plan was to find somebody who I was interested in to kind of give them a reason to come to me and then take it offline right there. And that's exactly what I did. You want to say how I did it? Okay. Now let's recap what she just said. <laughs> is that when she saw a guy she was interested in online, she would do something to get that guy's attention to, yes. to where he knew that you were paying attention. Right. And then it would be on him, the ball being in his court, to actually make a move and say something. Exactly. So this is what happened. I was on this app. I had sent her a message saying hello, and she responded back. And what I said next was, it was a basic hello or something like that, just to see if there was going to be a response. I'm thinking this is something that's a little bit more real because not all my conversations went this way. A lot of people would just go back and forth with so many messages on the app. I didn't know what she looked like yet <laughs> at that point. It was just what was acceptable? The photo. It was acceptable enough for me to say, let me, let's me let continue the conversation. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so we had a conversation on the phone. We decided to meet like the next day. Yeah. The next day. And at this time, it was the middle of the NBA playoffs. This is when LeBron was still in Miami. And I still wanted to meet her and I wanted to see the game. So I said, listen, we can meet, but we got to meet somewhere where I could see the game and talk to you at the exact same time. All right? Yeah. And we met at this sports bar called Rivals up in, yep. in Hollywood, Florida. All right, so she finds the place and we end up having a, we had our dinner, we had a conversation. Tell her, how was I during the game? Because I don't even remember you telling me this. I can tell he was very interested in the game and he would glance at it, but he was totally focused and fixated on me and what I was doing, what I was saying, and he was super attentive. What was your first impression of me as a person other than that? You were very warm, very considerate, very polite. We had the meal. We went outside and talked for a while. You asked me to go outside. I was going to leave and you said, oh, can we go outside and spend more time? Just sit outside. And then I walked into our car. She got in her car. She went home. So this wasn't a... Uh, first night then, right? Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now this is now we're gonna get into some more interesting details. After that first encounter, usually is it? I never asked you this. Is it usual for you after you go out with a guy the first time or meet with a guy, even if it's not a date date, that you wait for him to follow up, or do, would you follow up if you wanted to? I would wait for him to follow up. What if you really liked him and he didn't call? In that case, I would follow up, but it would be creative. It wouldn't be like, hey, why didn't you follow up? Well, in between our first time meeting and whatever was going to happen in the future, I eventually, I called, right? Or yeah. text, I called. Yeah. I called. And what I found out later on, she almost wasn't going to reply to my call. She almost wasn't going to take my call. She was going to let that go and move on. Wow, we're spilling everything here. <laughs> there was something incongruent about Dre 
between how he spoke and who he was and how he looked as far as his appearance, like as far as how he was dressed. So I don't know what you call that style, but that's not what I was used to. Let's just put it that way. What are you used to? Well, I didn't date men who would dress that way. Okay. What did the men you date dress like? Let's just say I've dated men who, before Dre, I've dated men who were very fashionable. What does that mean? They knew how to dress. <laughs> I didn't know how to dress? No. What's wrong with Air Force One? I don't have time to tell you what's wrong with Air Force One. If he wasn't as, I would say, if he wasn't as intelligent as he was, and if we didn't have a great conversation, I would totally not speak to you again. So what was it about the conversation that, speaking to young men out there who may be going on dates with women they're attracted to, what was it about the conversation that really got your attention? What was it that really hooked you? Was it something that I said? What, what was it? Yeah, it was, I think it was, first it was energy. He was very focused on me and also um, he asked a lot of insightful questions. So everybody by now knows you ask great questions. Now let's talk. All right, so why did you end up replying to my call? Why did you end up returning my call? Even though I was wearing baggy jeans, a do-rag with a hat on top, he doesn't know how to dress. There's something about his physical presentation that just isn't connecting with right. what he has mentally, apparently. So how did you decide which one was going to win? Well, here's the thing. I think you can upgrade your presentation, but you can't upgrade your mind. At least not overnight. Right. Right? So the clothes don't make the man. Clothes do not make the man. But the mind can make the, the man. The mind absolutely makes the man. What was I talking about during our conversation that made you know that I had something up here? Well, we talked about books. Like we talked about what each other reads. Um, he kept pressing on who are my top five books or authors. We weren't asking each other these typical, you know, canned questions that make the date sound like an interview with drinks or interview with salads. Well, I didn't say this is the guy. Like, I didn't say that. I didn't say that until much, much, much later. Now we're here, we're talking about, I want all y'all to get from this is what a woman could be looking for in a man and you can check yourself. So what were the points that were for you that you said, any man I'm gonna date, he kind of has to have these things. I guess you're asking me what I was looking for. Yes. And what was important to me. What were the absolutes? I mean, yeah, everybody's looking for a lot of stuff. Right, so I, I had, I definitely had a list and I actually had a real list. So would a man wearing tattoos, would that get you excited and say, hey, I gotta meet this guy? Tattoos? A man, if, if a guy had tattoos, not wearing tattoos, but if he had tattoos, does that make him any more or less attractive? Not to me. Tattoos, no. No. The fact that I was an athlete that I played basketball. Did that make me more or less attractive at all? It was maybe more attractive just because I know athletes have a certain mentality and that's the kind of judgment I would be making. Like, okay, if he's an athlete, how did he become an athlete and who he is up here to become an athlete? That's what I would be thinking. So me being an entrepreneur, was that a plus, minus, or it kind of didn't matter, it was neutral? It was, to me, was neutral. I mean, I guess it was between a plus and a neutral. I mean, it can be a plus, but it can also not mean much. Well, let's just say that moving forward, his appearance didn't get better. So that was a lot of subtractions made. What okay? did you see moving forward? What kind of, what was in my appearance? Second forward? date we had, it was it a second date or third date? Second, second date, time we seen each other. It wasn't really a date. We were like walking around a little bit. We went to the beach, right? Yes. We went not to the, the beach, beach. Well, yeah, not on the stand, but like yeah. we just walked along the beach where all the restaurants are, and we had lunch, right? Yeah. And he showed up in slides, a basketball shorts, and tank top. The wife beater. The it's wife beater. Tired of being humble. Who who goes to meet a girl like this with a wife beater and slides? I I was more confused. I'm like, what is up with him? <laughs> Um, but we were talking about, what were we talking about next? Um, I learned that he had interests like uh, trivia night. He wanted to go to trivia night out of all places. I didn't even know what trivia night was. Trivia night, for those who don't know, is when you go to a restaurant or a bar or something 
and you bring people with you, one person, two people, five people. Y'all sit at the table and then the restaurant does like a game of trivia. They ask the question and you, your table or your group or your couple, you answer the questions and getting a certain number of questions right, you can win prizes and stuff like that. So it was a, a fun way to kind of get to know people because you get to find out what they know, if they know anything or not, how competitive people are, how much fun they can have in a group, or even if it's just you and one person. Then this is something you should do with a female. Wherever you live, find a trivia night and bring her there, then you can find out if she's dumb. You can find out how competitive she is. <laughs> and it's definitely better than the movies. In the movies, you can't talk, you can't even look at the person, and you can't see how they interact with other people. So that's why trivia nights is a good idea. Okay, now let's talk about, let's move it off of me and you in particular, and let's just talk about for females in general. Because a lot of young men who watch my videos ask me about dating, ask me about meeting girls, ask me about making themselves more attractive. I've had young men ask me, the reason I asked the tattoo question, a young man said to me, Dre, I'm trying to you know, change my image so I'm more attractive to women. Should I get a couple of tattoos on my chest? This is a serious <laughs> question. What do you, what's your answer to that? No. Why? Because you don't do that, you do that for yourself. You don't do it for females. If you want to put a tattoo on your forehead because you, you, your heart wants to do it for you, do it. I might Tyson. Yeah, but don't do it. Don't do it because of the female or because anybody else. I don't care who it is. So what you're saying is a man putting tattoos on his body, on his chest, on his back, on his arms, that doesn't make him more attractive to females? It will only make him more attractive if he himself feels like he's more attracted to his own self and his confidence goes up just because he has those tattoos. If that happens, maybe, but I don't think tattoos make a guy more interesting or attractive. So if there's a young man out there who sees a girl he's attracted to, let's say she goes to school and he sees her every day or maybe a couple times a week, she may or may not even be aware of his existence. How does he break the ice and approach the girl? If I was a girl, I would be impressed with a guy who actually speaks up. So I think to me, the worst thing I've been in the, in the situation where a guy is looking and looking and looking, but he doesn't have the courage to come over and do or say anything. She just said, and what you're saying, let me ask you, when you're out, let's say you're at a, a Starbucks yes, and you're sitting at a table by yourself <laughs> and there's some guy across the Starbucks, yep. he sees you, let's say you see him and he's attractive, you think he's at least mildly attractive, yes. and you see him notice you and you know that he saw you noticing him, yes. but he just keeps looking but he doesn't come over there, Yeah. what do you think about that guy? that he doesn't have the courage to come over or say anything or he doesn't he doesn't have the courage or he doesn't know what to say either way it's an issue it's a, it's a confidence issue then he lost when it comes to dating online what is what are the most important things that a man should do when it comes to just his profile before there's any interaction what is it that a man definitely needs to do to be attractive to a sophisticated, for lack of a better term, woman. Okay, I don't know what sophisticated woman means. Okay, sophisticated meaning intelligent, she has a, a career, she got her own things going on that she doesn't really need a man. Well, I don't think you can know, I don't think you can be a certain thing to that type of a woman. So that type of a woman who's a career woman and she has her ducks in a row and she's independent, she doesn't need a man. I think the best thing to do is to be your true self and be your authentic self and present yourself authentically. So if you're into punk rock, be that. If you're into basketball, be that. If you're into, I don't know, what else? Milking cows or knitting, <laughs> whatever you are, just be that, you know? You don't need to embellish who you are. Just be yourself you're, and put your best foot forward. What are some absolute no's when it comes to dating online, when a man presents himself? What are some things that really just kill the deal for them before he even gets a chance to say anything? I guess the, the the ego again when when you when you're being who you're really not or when, or when you're accentuating other assets like your cars or your abs or your whatever. So what you're saying is if somebody really has something, does this just apply to the body or could this apply to other things? Too? Depends on what the guy is about and who he's looking for. If he's looking for a girl who 
to whom that is important, then show it off. It's going to work in your favor. What if he's, what if he, his main picture is a picture of him sitting in his Ferrari or sitting on the hood of the car to make sure you can see it's a Ferrari and that's his main photo? Would you be attracted to that? Case by case scenario, it depends. It really depends. What are some absolute, some more absolute no, definitely don'ts when it comes to dating online? Harassing. You know, if you, if you say hi to somebody and they don't respond back, don't keep nudging them and pushing them. Like they got the message, they have their phone in their hands 24 seven. You don't need to nudge them all the time. When they don't write back, just writing negative comments like, oh, you think you're all that. <laughs> I've heard many stories on that. Really? Yeah. Um, what do you find women, I mean, you're not single now, but what do you find women are most in need of these days when it comes to dating online, whether that's for the woman or for the What do you mean in, the, in need of? In need of. What do, if a woman wants to make herself more attractive to men, what does she do? Okay, so the way I figured it out is I sat, to, sat down with myself and I asked myself questions. Who is this man that you would like to meet and possibly explore the chances or possibilities of a relationship? Who is this guy? And I went per category. So I did start with the physical and then character, the family, how does he make me feel? I just went in very, very, very long de you know, detail. And I answered a lot of questions that I asked myself and I figured out what I wanted. Uh, so the most common mistake probably for men and women is not knowing what you want. Because I speak to many ladies who say, I want a nice guy, tall, hands, tall, dark and handsome, and um, good family, sense of humor, likes to have fun, adventurous. So the most important thing that worked for you was you got clear on what you wanted, so it was easier for you to know something wasn't what you wanted. Correct. So I, I got very specific, and that's the reason why. I went online, I said, I know my outcome, this is what I want. I'm going to find a guy that kind of fits that category where there is a possibility he's that guy. Found that guy. I um, did something for you to respond, right? I favorited you or whatever. So I basically set the hook. <laughs> and then he responded. I took it offline and then I started learning about him to see if he was the guy. I knew what I wanted. I got specific about it and then my search became easier because I knew exactly what I wanted, what to look for. If you don't know what you want, how are you going to find it? All right, last thing we're going to talk about. You you have male friends. You have male friends who you weren't dating. Yes. Anyways, what do you see are the biggest challenges those men face in attracting the right type of woman? I would say, you know, I have great male friends and they are very deserving and I love them so much and they're they're amazing people they're great great people mistake they're making is saying why can i find the right girl for me you know i know a guy who moved out of state just to find a wife yeah, you found no <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing you know I, and I always ask him you have these high standards you know who you want but are you that guy that this type of female is going to be attracted to so the biggest mistake they're making is not working on their mind, not working on their mind game. Mental game. Mental game. So the biggest mistake for men is, when you say working on their mental game, what does that mean? When you say, who are you being? Does it mean like, how confident are you? How intelligent are you? What are you doing all day? How do you take care of your body? How much sleep are you getting? What do you mean? All of that, like personal development. I call it, you know, what are you doing every day to better yourself, to be deserving of the high caliber woman that you want in your life. So doing things to continuously progress, progress, get better. Correct, correct. Continuously progress and, you know, get better in every way, every day. And as I mentioned in the mental workbook, Success is having a goal, having a definite chief aim, and you are taking actions to get towards it. If you're not doing that, it's impossible for you to be successful. That is it for this first episode. Let me know in the comments what you want to hear us talk about in future episodes. I already got a list of stuff we're going to talk about in future episodes, but if y'all got some other ideas or even better ideas or ideas that can enhance the ideas that we already got, I definitely want to hear them. Leave them down there in the comments. This is Anna. Y'all know me as Dre all day. Oh yeah, follow her on Instagram at A N N A. Just say the name. No.
and a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Follow her on Instagram. Her name's right there on the screen. Y'all gonna see it on the screen. My name, y'all know it, at Dre Baldwin. Instagram, Snapchat, Dre All Day on Twitter. I know email me, Dre at DreAllDay.com. You got any questions, y'all? See y'all next time. Work on your game. Oh, you said. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com. Thanks for watching this vid. Follow me on all these social media platforms here. I'm active on all of them. You can reach me on all of them. And if you ever have a question for me about anything, send me an email, Dre at DreAllDay.com. Everybody, I'll see you in the next vid. Work on your game. Dre All Day.